Hello. So I usually don't make videos. I don't know what this is about or why I'm really doing it, but I did want to do a video, I guess, of this whole trip, this whole road trip, which is going down to Trappist, Kentucky, where Our Lady of Gethsemane Monastery is, where Thomas Merton, one of my favorite authors, uh, used to live. And uh, right now I'm right off of 81, somewhere in the middle of Virginia, just a little north of Shenandoah National Park. And I've already visited Harper's Ferry and I've already visited the Appalachian Trail Conservancy, which was felt a little bit like a homecoming, but I think I wanted to maybe figure out why is it that I want to do this trip. And I think it might have something to do with the American soul doesn't feel wild enough. And so I felt the need to do some sort of wild road trip to some place I've never been and somewhat make it a pilgrimage because we also don't do pilgrimages very well in American culture. So as this goes along, I'm going to try to take pictures and some videos every so often and maybe figure out why the heck I'm doing this trip. I think there's a few reasons, but I don't think I should say them right now. I still need to process and I've got a lot of driving left to do. So this is episode one. Have fun. Now, I've made it to McAfee Knob. I'm gonna camp at the shelter, Catawba Shelter. Probably get up around three in the morning, see if I can get to the knob for sunrise. So, I'm finally here. Made my way to the Catawba Shelter. It's right behind me. And there's a bear box, so that's fun. But I am about two, just under two miles from McAfee Knob. Let me see if I can get up, like I said, real early to catch the sunrise. So hopefully that'll be the next video you see. Yeah. Ladies and gents, this is what the trail looks like five in the morning. After about two days of driving, made it to the Abbey of Gethsemane, where one of my heroes, Thomas Merton, used to live. It's already kind of eerily quiet. It's 
also odd knowing that he used to walk around on the same property, but I'm gonna move my bags in. It's a very strict policy about no talking, so I'm doing it out here in the parking lot. But uh, I think it's gonna be a good week. It's a really nice day out today. It finally rained last night, so it's no longer about 97 degrees in Kentucky heat. And uh, the rain cooled everything off about 15, 20 degrees. But today, I'm going to steal off for a little bit and go to Louisville, to Fort Muhammad Ali, where Merton had some sort of a vision divine experience and uh, maybe the next video will be from there but this is what the place looks like I'll have to explore some of the trails later So that's the street corner of 4th and Muhammad Ali, what used to be 4th and Walnut. I went and visited, obviously, and took some pictures of the plaque, but what stood out was actually kind of its normalcy, that it was, um, the holy can happen anywhere. And Merton had a, an experience of sanctity, of divine love in such a normal street corner really um, I think that's the takeaway right that sanctity can happen in incredibly normal places yeah so there you go Hiking feels a little bit more like home.
Judging by the animals, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be St. Francis. Yeah, that's a safe bet. This is covered in prayers that people wrote. Of course, an icon of Jesus blessing a child, I guess. Wow. I think I need to write something. So, I wrote a prayer. I need to find a place to hide this. <laughs> so that if I come back, which I hope to already, um, I can find it. So I'm gonna just see if I can find a crevice somewhere to put it in. But this is incredible to have a secret, private prayer shed in the middle of the woods in Kentucky. I mean, right? That's cool. So I decided to take a walk today and I went out to the stone house, which is a hermitage, but it's on the property and here you go. It's a little nativity. Hmm. Pretty cool. Might sit for a moment here. So here I am on my final night here at the Abbey. And uh, just to give you a glimpse, this is what I'm looking at right now. 
which is the front and main entrance. And of course, I just finished watching some of this sunset over here, but mm, I guess some final reflections are in place. I am leaving after a week of silence, although there were a few words spoken. absolutely convinced that our lives are dominated, dominated by hurry and by noise and by crowds. And I don't know if we can even fathom uh, the possibility that a different mode of life is possible. I think this week has only reconfirmed for me that in some sense I really do think American Christianity has lost the plot. I think I read about three or four books cover to cover while I was here. And one of them was a survey of church history and how for the first 1,600 years, there was a whole side or a small contingent that seemed to understand Christianity in a different way that had so much more to do with the conscious, loving union with God here and now that could extend into potentially forever and yet here we are and we've made Christianity into being all about buildings the endless Bible studies of knowledge building up of endless talk about guilt and then once you're forgiven of the guilt you have to find new ways of being guilty again and again and again all the time with this very poor anthropology and I don't know if we can fathom just how beautiful the world really is, how gorgeous it is, how even the desolations and the downfalls that we go through, um, in some sense, those can even be gifts that help to strip away and, and to purify in some sense all the things that we think are so important but really aren't because we have a habit of building ourselves up with our titles and accomplishments and how many people like us and we bandage ourselves up without realizing that we're actually just the husk of something because we never took time to develop a full self and I think that's part of it maybe what if faith is really about becoming who you truly are in Christ, which is probably a dense mystery that we cannot comprehend. But this place just kind of reaffirmed for me all the ways that I feel left out, minimalized, marginalized, because I had a hint I, yeah, I think this is really where it's at. All of this stuff of recognizing that every step you take is upon holy ground at all times. That every person you meet is a holy person. That not just Sundays, but every moment of every other day is equally holy. What does it look like to maximize the sanctity of everything? And to treat everything like a gift everyone every place every moment I'll probably forget all of the lessons from this week and there's definitely more that I, I won't share but are written down in my journal so that's just for me but I'm very thankful to have found this place which I will definitely come back to because yes one of my favorite authors, Merton, Thomas Merton, uh, was 
a brother here. He was a monk here. But this place was good to me. So this week was a gift.